What's up everybody? I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm counting down the top 10 most hyped sneakers that have dropped so far this year. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't yet and want to see more videos just like this one. Also make sure to give me a follow on Instagram and on Twitter at RealSethFowler. But with all of that out of the way, let's get into it. So far, 2018 has been a pretty incredible year when it comes to sneaker releases. As of right now, almost halfway through the year, at the end of May, we've already had a lot of strong contenders for shoe of the year. At least in my opinion, but I'm sure a lot of you guys would agree. So because we've already had so many strong releases this year, I figured now would be a good time to take a look back at some of the most hyped, Maybe not the best, but some of the most hyped releases of the last couple months. This video, of course, is all my own opinion. I ranked each shoe based on how popular I thought the release was at the time. So the shoes I included on the list or the order of the list itself is all subjective. But with all that out of the way, let's start things off with an honorable mention. And the reason these shoes didn't make it onto the list itself is because they released last year. However, I do consider the shoe an honorable mention because it got a much wider release this year. And that shoe, of course, is the Yeezy 700 Wave Runner. This is Kanye's first foray into the dad shoe genre, and I've got to say, I think the shoe looks great. Now when I first made a video on the shoe last year when I pre-ordered it, everyone hated on it, everyone thought that it was total trash, and as hype does, it got to people, it changed their mind, and now there's a lot of Yeezy 700 fans out there that didn't exist like three months ago. When pre-orders started shipping and I first got my pair, resale was going between six and nine hundred dollars, and before the adidas.com restock was announced, prices hit almost twelve hundred dollars. But then when the shoe finally released and everyone was able to get their pair, prices plummeted. You can generally get a pair now between four and five hundred dollars, and there is still a lot of hype behind the sneaker, but when this restock first happened, everyone went nuts. It was like at your mom and your sister on the computer so they can start going for Yeezys. It was everyone, all hands on deck. It was kind of a mess. So needless to say, even though its first public release wasn't this year, it was still one of the most hyped releases of the entire year. Now jumping into the list at number 10, we've got one of my favorite releases of the year by far, the Air Jordan 1 Shadow. The Shadow 1s have become one of those iconic Air Jordan 1 colorways that if you're an Air Jordan 1 collector, you kind of need to have in your collection. It's funny though, because last time the shoe retroed, it wasn't anywhere close to as popular as it is now. In fact, you could pretty much walk into any sneaker store like a week after the shoe released and there was pretty much a full size run. Now though, because of the the popularity of the Air Jordan 1, the shoe pretty much sold out instantaneously. Resale might only be like $40 to $50 over retail, but that didn't stop resellers from going out and buying up all the pairs in every store. I ended up buying two pairs, one to rock and one to stock, and overall I think this is probably one of the cleanest sneakers on the entire list. Coming in at number 9, it's one of the first big releases of the year, the Levi's Air Jordan 4. And if you were really trying to find a pair for retail, you were probably out of luck. The shoe features a full blue jean denim upper and a gum outsole. And because people love that distressed jean look, they started distressing and bleaching their pairs of Levi 4s. That look is dope for sure, but I still really love the way the Levi 4s look out of the box, so I pretty much just kept my pair in the original state and just worn it a couple times as is. Resale of the Levi 4s have stayed pretty steady between 600 and 700 bucks, so if you're looking to grab a pair, that's probably what you're going to be paying. Coming in at number eight is the Air Jordan 1 bread toe. As I mentioned before with the Shadow Ones, the popularity of the Air Jordan Ones is pretty much the highest it's been in a really long time. The bread toes are a new colorway that are a spin on the classic black toe one colorway. The only major difference between the two colorways is rather than having a white toe, having a red toe. And I've got to say the bread toe colorway is hot. I really love red, especially on Air Jordan 1, so I think more red on an already dope colorway is just a recipe for success. So the fact that the shoe was a great looking Air Jordan 1 and was limited meant the shoe was an instant success. Before the shoe released, people underestimated how difficult it would actually be to get a pair, and then when it finally came out and a lot of people who wanted a pair didn't get a pair, the resale shot up. Right now, the resale on StockX is hovering around 375 and I've got to be honest, I think it's only going to go up. So if you're trying to get a pair, I say buy it now or pray for a really unlikely resale. Stock. Moving on to number seven, we've got probably the most recent release on this list, the Off-White Converse. This shoe was announced back in August of last year as part of the Off-White Nike The 10 collection, and for some reason it didn't release with the rest of the sneakers, and the release date kept getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back, and then in April, rumors started to swirl that it was going to release in May, and it's finally here. I personally think if this shoe had originally released back with the rest of the 10, it might have been one of the least popular shoes in that collection. Just because Converse's are never really as hyped up as Nike shoes, and the entire collection was just so well done. Not to say that the Converse wasn't, but compared to the other shoes, there just wasn't anything too crazy about it. Yes, it was translucent. You can change the look by changing your socks, but there have been a lot of translucent shoes in the past and that doesn't automatically translate to resale. But because the shoe was rumored for so long and hype was just building and building and building, the shoe now goes for around 800 to to $1,000 for a Converse. Most Converse's go for like 40 to 50 bucks. So that's 
that's a lot of resale. This is one of the shoes on the list I wasn't able to cop, and to be completely honest with you guys, I'm not too mad about it. But a nice looking shoe nonetheless. Coming in at number six, it's the Adidas Yeezy 500 Bust. Blush, I'm sorry, I meant blush. The Yeezy 500 was a highly anticipated shoe, especially after Complex Con when early pairs were selling for around $1,200. And then when the shoe finally released in much wider numbers than I think people were expecting, the resale pretty much dissolved. Also, to be fair, I think it's an ugly shoe, and that might have something to do with it, but um, you know, resale is resale. You never know. There are more colorways of the shoe coming out, so if you missed out on this pair, which you definitely didn't, but if you did, you can get some of the other colorways, which are somehow worse. Just my opinion, but the pair that I got to review, I sold 10 minutes after I put the video live. Coming in at number five are the Off-White Vapor Maxes from 2018. Obviously last year we got the very successful original Off-White Vapor Max, which now goes for around $1,500. But this year Virgil and Nike offered us a consolation prize with two more colorways. This time around the colorways were arguably a lot simpler. They both had translucent outsoles and one color uppers. There was a black colorway and a white colorway, and even though I don't love Vapor Maxes personally, both these shoes do look pretty good. As someone who has a lot of experience trying to buy sneakers for retail in New York City, this was one of those pairs that was pretty much impossible to grab for retail unless you knew somebody. This shoe was crazy limited and I had no luck at all so I had to buy my pair for resale. But at the end of the day, I'm glad I did because I think overall it's a really nice looking shoe. Resale for both colorways hovers between $500 and $600 and most likely there won't be any restock. So if you're trying to grab a pair, you're gonna have to pay resale. Getting closer to the top at number four is the Pharrell NMD Trail Holy Pack. This pack featured four different colorways of the Adidas Pharrell NMD Trail. You had two relatively simple colorways, the white and the black. The white colorway was the one I was actually able to grab. And then you had two sort of tie-dye colorways. One was more like pink and purple, and the other one was more like purple and green. And as someone who really prefers minimal looking sneakers, the tie-dye shoes actually looked really good. We've seen a trend over the last year where the Pharrell NMD seemed to be overtaking the Yeezys, the more popular Adidas silhouette. And I'm actually a fan of that because I think the colorways we've been seeing on the Pharrell NMDs are a lot more interesting than the colorways we've been getting on the Yeezys. Because there was four different colorways and a decent amount of pairs released in each colorway, they're not extremely difficult to get. And sometimes if you're lucky, there have been sporadic restocks, but it's not really something that you can count on. Resale on these sneakers really varies based on what colorway you're going for, with the white and black being the more expensive, around $400 and $500, and the tie-dye colorways being the cheaper ones at around $300 to $400. If you really feel like you need a pair, $300 to $400 really isn't a bad price to pay for any of those sneakers. Finally getting to the top three, we have probably my favorite release of the year so far, the Adidas Futurecraft 4D. I know I've said this a million times, but I went to school for industrial design, I was a professional industrial designer before I became a full-time YouTuber, and because of that I'm obsessed with things like design and innovation and 3D printing in particular. And the Adidas Futurecraft 4D sort of combines all three of those things into one just amazing sneaker. One, it's great to look at. Two, it's pretty comfortable. And three, Ah, that 3D printed midsole is dope. <laughs> The idea that Adidas is working towards the future by customizing pairs for specific people is such a cool concept and I love the way they're going about it. Some of you guys in the comments might be saying, but Seth, this shoe came out last year. And it kind of did, but its real public release was this year. And when the shoe first publicly released, the demand was insane. A majority of the demand was because the shoe was just so limited and was going for so much money. But on the other side of the coin, I think there was a lot of people who just wanted to try out the 3D printed technology. I was definitely in that second group of people and I'm so thankful to StockX for working with me and actually giving me a pair to review. It's been like one of my favorite sneakers that I've worn pretty much every day. And that's not an exaggeration. The reason I haven't been posting as much on Instagram is because I'm wearing that same shoe over and over and over again and I just feel like it might get repetitive. As of right now, the shoe goes for around $1,000 resale, but the good news is Adidas is trying to ramp up production and create 100,000 of them by the end of the year. So if you're trying to get a pair, maybe don't pay resale and wait and see if you can get a pair for retail. To be fair though, retail is 300 bucks, so if that's a little too expensive, then just maybe pass on this one. Moving on to the second most hype sneaker on this list, of course it's an off-white sneaker, the off-white Air Jordan 1s in the triple white colorway. This shoe is honestly so high on the list, one, because it's an off-white sneaker, but two, because it was only released in Europe. And when a shoe is only released in a certain region, the demand for the shoe in every other region goes up exponentially. There are rumors that this shoe is gonna re-release around the world later this year, but nothing is confirmed yet. And because of that, resale right now is around two grand. I really love the way this shoe looks, but I've gotta be honest, I don't like it as much as the original Chicago colorway. I just think the white, although really clean just isn't as interesting to look at. There's not really anything else to say about this shoe. I'm sure you guys already know all there is to know about pretty much all the off-white sneakers, so I'll leave it at that. So if you're looking to grab a pair before they re-release, if they re-release, you're looking to pay around two grand. So the most ironic thing just happened while I was filming this video, which is of course 
the top 10 most hyped sneakers to release so far this year. Um, the off-white UNC ones just dropped. So now, not only do I have to add this little clip in because obviously they're one of the most hyped sneakers to drop this year, um, but also I missed them because I was filming this very video. So that's awesome. But the good news is I can lump these in at number two with the other off-white ones because they are the same amount of hype and at the end of the day they are technically the same shoe. With that being said, I did actually see these shoes at a Nike event about a month ago but I wasn't able to talk about them until just now that they're actually announced. The materials do seem to be a little bit different than what they've been using in the past, like small upgrades throughout the shoe that you probably wouldn't notice unless you looked at other off-white pairs pretty thoroughly. Overall, a super nice looking shoe. I love the colorway. I'm definitely going to be trying to get a pair to review for you guys as soon as possible. But overall, I mean, a super clean shoe. As of right now, resale seems to be hovering around $1,800 to $2,000. I'm sure that price will start to drop when people's pairs start coming in from the sneakers app and there's more releases around the world. Um, eventually, it probably will go back up, but uh, I think right now seems to be kind of an artificial high that will decrease. As to where these rank in relation to the triple white colorway that dropped earlier this year, I think these have the possibility of being a little bit more hyped because people seem to like the colorway a little bit more. But again, because these are probably getting a wider worldwide release, they might be more common. So we'll just have to wait and see. But for now, I feel pretty safe putting them both at the number two position. And finally coming in at number one might be a shoe that you all didn't expect. Or maybe you did, I don't. It's the Sean Watherspoon Air Max 197. If you don't know the story behind this sneaker, basically what it is is that Sean Watherspoon, the owner of Round 2, entered a contest at Nike. The contest was about redesigning classic Air Maxes for Air Max Day. Everyone voted on it and his design won. The prize, of course, was to have his sneaker actually produced and something that I don't think anyone really expected was that it turned him into sort of a celebrity. Sean toured the country in a Volkswagen van that was painted to look like the shoe and at every stop around the country, his van was mobbed. Not only that, but I don't think people expected the demand for the shoe to be that big. Literally everyone wanted a pair and it's one of those shoes that was basically plastered all over Instagram for like a month after it released. It's interesting because a couple days to a week before the general release of the sneaker, pairs were going for maybe like 380 or 300 and then immediately on the morning of release after everyone got their L's on the sneakers app or missed out in stores, resale shot up to like 600 bucks. And it's crazy because resale has only gone up from there. This is a shoe that even if you bought it at like 400 bucks, if you waited a month, you could still double your money. The hype behind this shoe is unreal and it's still going. It's crazy. If you were lucky enough to get a pair for retail, I'd be interested to know if you actually kept it or sold it because I know the appeal of that resale is really tempting. That pretty much wraps it up for the list today. Make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below letting me know if you agree with this list and if you don't, what you would change about it. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't yet and I'll see you all in the next one.